Happy Friday, everybody. We have had a week at RG Adoption Consulting. We've had a month, holy cow. Wrapping up November, National Adoption Awareness Month. That was something. We had uh, all sorts of guest bloggers and poem readers and artists and stories and it was so it's so nice to hear from all sides of the adoption triad i don't know what we're going to do next year for adoption national adoption awareness month in fact i just had two out of the seven of my team members actually six i'm the seventh in town at my house in cleveland and the rest on zoom we had our annual year-end meeting probably my favorite meeting of the year and discussed, went over everything from 2021 up to date, and then we started planning for next year. So before I go there, I just sent out our weekly email, and oh, this may have been the most epic month, November, of the whole year. We had, I think, 10 matches and nine adoptions in November. Big month, November was a big month, and I hope that we'll stay the same. You know, it's interesting. People ask all the time, like, what are your busier months? And if you call some agencies, they may tell you, oh, this is always a business, busy month or, oh, this is always a slow time. But I have to tell you, we just looked back at the last three years and there's no trend. Some months are busier than others and we never know which months those are gonna be. What I can tell you is that at some point in the first quarter, there's we always have one of our busiest months of the year. Usually it's not January, typically it's February or March. And again, there's no real long-term data to support that, but over the last few years, that's what I've noticed. If you are someone on the fence thinking about starting, now is actually a great time to start your journey. I know most people, tend to say, we're gonna start right after the holidays. And I'd say, start now so that when we hit those busy months at the beginning of the year, you're ready. You're ready, because like I said, we tend to have one of the busiest months of the entire year will likely land within one of those three months in the first quarter. So be ready, so get engaged now. We never stop working. <laughs> So that's something I wanted to uh, report on. One thing I learned was that a lot of people are coming to us from Facebook. We get a lot of our families coming to us through Google and Facebook and past clients, Instagram. We've had a huge uptick from Instagram. And this was really exciting to me because as I think most of you have felt, <coughs> especially if you're in your adoption journey right now, it's been a difficult year in that it's been really slow. There's been, there's been less adoptions all over the country and way more families. And I thought for sure when we looked at the data, we would see that more and more people are waiting over one year to adopt. Whereas previously, we could very confidently say that the majority of our families were adopting within three to nine months, <clears throat> which I think it may still say on our video. I'm not sure if I changed that. What I was surprised at was that 97 or 98% of our families in 2021 have adopted in under a year from the time they signed up with agencies. 98% are still adopting in under a year. That's amazing. And I know it, I think it's over 75% are adopting in under a year from the day they start with us. So those statistics are still high, which, which still really tells you what the benefit is of working with a consultant and really being able to tap into our networks and that multi-agency multi approach. So it's still working. It'll be really interesting to see the stats from 2022, because I think in 2022 is where we're gonna really start feeling the effects from this year. But I was really excited to see that. 
I am hoping, when what I've been hearing is that more and more agencies are hoping to open up their lists at the start of the year. We'll see if that happens. I do have to um, give a shout out to Tim Elder at the Infant Adoption Guide podcast. I've been on his podcast three times and those podcasts are just the gift that keeps on giving for us. So thank you, Tim. It's been a really nice partnership. More boys than girls. More boys than girls. And somebody on our team had a theory about that, which was that it's harder for an expectant mom to place a baby girl that might look like her. They feel more of an attachment than a boy. I don't know, it's just one, one theory. Most people who have a consult with us about starting the adoption process and using a consultant or not, we'll make that decision and jump on board within the first, you know, uh, within, I think it was the first 30 days of, or maybe within the first couple of weeks of having that consult. Whereas we also have a good amount of people that a year later come to us and say, okay, now we're ready. So a lot of people, when they're first making that phone call, aren't really truly ready to jump in, but the majority are. So that's interesting. Let's see, another interesting fact from our stats from the past year thus far, baby race. That's a question we get a lot. 42% of the babies are white. This was of our families who took placement, okay? So this is a small, but this is just one sampling, I would, I would say. So 42% are white, exactly the same amount of Hispanic and full African-American, full Hispanic, full African-American. So 15.5% were Hispanic, 15.5% were African-American, but really the second biggest percentage for race was some, a mix with Caucasian. So black, white, Hispanic, white, Native American white, something with white mix. And then 2.2% were either Native American or African American Hispanic. 48 of our families took placement and we had 50 babies. So we had a set of twins in there. Well, at least one set of twins. So the 48 so far, I'm so excited about that. Most agencies are not that high. We have a couple agencies who are in, always in the hundreds or 50s, 60s, 70s. 48? Yeah. Oh, this is where, let's see, 48 placements! <laughs> Happy New Year! We've worked with a ton of different agencies this year, so we there wasn't really, there were a couple agencies where we've done a good amount of placements, but really just a whole bunch of agencies where we were doing one or two placements, and then every... And then there were a couple with a, a few more. So that was interesting. So it's, it, it's certainly not one particular agency that we are having the best, you know, that, that our families are placing the most with. It's really all over the board. This year we got in the 60s, I don't have it at my fingertip, but somewhere between 60 to 70 situations sent to us from agencies that we were able to share with our clients. So if you think about that, now let me, let me explain this. Some consultants will share every single situation that comes to them with all of their families. So sometimes I see on Facebook, oh, we signed up last week and we already got 10 situations. We, the way we do it, and that's fine. You know, some people want to see them all. The way we do it is we're only going to send you a situation if it falls within your parameters and the expectant mother's parameters. So you're not gonna see every situation that comes to us. Every once in a while, we won't send out a situation at all if we get it. If we're just feeling too icky about it, like if, I mean, I think I got a situation this year that was like $65,000 and I just couldn't ethically send that out. Doesn't happen often. And then I had another situation, a possible situation come to me from a place that just, 
I just wasn't feeling good about from the year because of some past situations. So occasionally we will get a situation sent to us that I won't even send to our families. Here's an interesting statistic. Of the clients that we worked with this year, which we have worked with 104 clients fam so far, between our private clients and our clients in our Adoption Roadmap Academy. And if you're interested, if you're like, what's the Adoption Roadmap Academy? Go to theadoptionroadmap.com. Of the 104 people that we have worked with so far this year, 47 have been from Illinois. And that's because that's where I was based for the first eight years of my business, seven years of my business before I moved to Cleveland. So people know me there and I have great relationships there. Nine from California, eight from Colorado and eight from Virginia. So those are the top four, like as far as groupings of where our clients are, for, are from. We've worked with people from 28 different states. One year, we'll work with people from every state. <laughs> Over half of our families are open to all races. Yeah, so great, great November, but I do see things picking up. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, it's funny, I keep this running list of people who are matching, who are matched, and you imagine in, in a month I had to cross off 10 of them. I'm like, oh my God, my list, I need to fill up this match list already because I might always feel good when it's filled. But I guess when it's empty, that means hopefully that they've adopted. All right, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And I will keep playing with this really fun software I am. If you keep tuning in, I promise you're going to see more fun stuff popping up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and more sound effects. So let's let's play a, uh, here we go. And that's what I'll leave you with. Have a wonderful weekend.